हेलो स्टूडेंट्स दिस इज शैलजा विभूते लेक्चरर गोपटे पी यू कॉलेज ऑफ कॉमर्स एंड साइंस लेट अस कंटिन्यू द यूनिट करंट इलेक्ट्रिसिटी इन द लास्ट वीडियो वी हैव डिस्कस्ड अबाउट किर्च ऑफ स्लॉस एंड वीटस्टन नेटवर्क एज वी नो इन द फर्स्ट लॉ दैट इज किर्च ऑफ करंट लॉ इट इज अप्लीकेबल टू means it is applied at a node in an electrical network and the sign convention that is current entering the node is positive current leaving the node is considered as negative then in kirchhoff's second law the algebraic sum of product of current and resistance is equal to the algebraic sum of emfs in a loop now let us learn how to obtain the balancing condition of wheatstone's network this is very important question it carries five marks so let us try to understand how to obtain the balancing condition of wheatstone's bridge or wheatstone's network using kirchhoff's rules first we have to draw the circuit diagram in the wheatstone's bridge r1 r2 r3 r4 r4 resistors and are connected in the form of a quadrilateral uh, you can name the quadrilateral as say a b c d and directions of the currents you have to mark in between a and b battery is connected in between c and d a galvanometer of resistance g is connected and uh, directions of currents i1 i2 i3 i4 are as shown and one more current here it is considered that is current through galvanometer and it is denoted by ig so when you are drawing the circuit diagram after drawing it just check whether you have given the direction of current or not okay now let us apply the kirchhoff's first law so to apply kirchhoff's first law you have to choose the node so which node you will choose now let us choose the node c so choose this node c so at that node c observe the currents i1 is entering i3 is leaving the node even ig is leaving the node means three currents you have to write now so i1 is entering positive i3 and ig are leaving the node so negative apply the rule now if you apply you will get i1 minus ig minus i3 is equal to 0 okay so i1 minus i3 minus ig is equal to 0 this is ig okay make it as ig okay now shift these negative terms to that side you will get i1 is equal to i3 plus ig let us name it as equation 1 now let us choose node that is d now apply kirchhoff's again first law so i2 is entering ig is entering but i4 is leaving the node d so apply the rule now what you will get if you apply the rule you will get i2 plus ig minus i4 is equal to 0 again shift the negative term to that side you will get i2 plus ig is equal to i4 name it as equation 2 
now what you have to do you have to choose loop now so which loop you have to choose to choose the loop you take again this triangle one that is a c d a this loop you have to choose okay then uh, apply kirchhoff's second law how to apply kirchhoff's second law you start it from say a to c current is i1 resistance is r1 so what you will get i1 r1 now come to the next arm that is c to d here current is ig and resistance is g and direction if you observe it is continuing so you have to take plus i1 r1 plus ig g when you see this side it is opposite so you have to take minus sign and you have to write i2 r2 and in this loop cell is not connected so it is is equal to zero so when you apply kirchhoff's second law to the loop ac da you will get i1 r1 plus igg minus i2 r2 is equal to zero shift the negative term that side you will get i1 r1 plus igg is equal to i2 r2 okay so now choose next loop that is c b d c means this loop again a triangle shape one okay in this loop apply kirchhoff's second law okay let us start from c to b so if you start it from c to b i3 r3 see the direction of the current now it is opposite so take minus sign i3 r3 minus i4 r4 in this again direction is opposite so minus igg is equal to zero again in this loop cell is not connected so take emf as zero so what you will get you will get i3 r3 minus i4 r4 minus igg is equal to zero again shift the minus sign that side you will get i3 r3 and minus term is minus i4 shift it to that side you will get i4 r4 plus igg is equal to i3 r3 name it as equation 4 now most important line when current through galvanometer is zero that is ig is equal to zero the network is said to be balanced so when wheatstone's network is said to be balanced when current through galvanometer is zero that is ig is equal to zero now this ig is equal to zero you have to substitute it in equation 1 equation 2 equation 3 and equation 4 when you substitute it you will get equation 1 will be i1 is equal to i3 ig is zero so i1 is equal to i3 you can name it as equation a similarly equation 2 becomes i2 is equal to i4 name it as equation b similarly equation 3 becomes i1 r1 is equal to i2 r2 name it as equation 5 now equation 4 becomes i3 r3 is equal to i4 r4 name it as equation 6 now to get the final answer divide equation 5 by equation 6 if you divide equation 5 by equation 6 what you will get this is equation 5 i1 r1 left side of equation 6 is i3 r3 divided what you will get i1 r1 divided by i3 r3 similarly right side if you observe i2 r2 divided by i4 r4 and take the help of equation a and b what is equation a i1 is nothing is equal to what i3 so when you are dividing these two instead of i1 if you take i3 this i3 and this i3 get cancelled so what left in rh uh, lhs side r1 by r3 
similarly rhs side this i2 i4 get cancelled using this equation a and b so your answer will be r1 by r3 is equal to r2 by r4 and whatever written in this box this one this is the condition for balance of wheatstone's bridge and it is most important derivation so try to practice it you have to learn first kirchhoff's first law and second law how to apply it to a node and a loop respectively then you can obtain this expression very easily so here important points are first you have to learn the proper circuit diagram with arrow mark for the direction of current then uh, you have to apply kirchhoff's first law then second law and a very simple where galvanometer is connected those two nodes you have to take to apply kirchhoff's first law and you have to choose the triangle shape loop where galvanometer is connected means which arm we have considered for the galvanometer that the common arm you have to consider for for both the loops if you remember this one then other points are very simple and uh, important point is ig is equal to zero that uh, line is very important means current through galvanometer is zero then you can get the expression r1 by r3 is equal to r2 by r4 this is condition for balance of wheatstone's bridge hope you have understood this let us continue uh, what are the applications of this wheatstone's network here we have listed two applications first one is it is used to find the resistance of a wire and second one is used to compare the resistances of two wires you may get one mark question here what is meter bridge meter bridge is nothing but it is practical form of wheatstone's bridge in laboratory you can see this meter bridge so meter bridge is it is a practical form of wheatstone's bridge then what is the principle of this meter bridge its principle is it works on the principle of balanced wheatstone network so what is balancing condition of wheatstone's network r1 by r3 is equal to r2 by r4 if ig is equal to 0 based on this meter bridge works now if you see the diagram here it is meter bridge in meter bridge when you will come to lab that time you can see this meter bridge but now let us see in the diagram this meter bridge you know here one meter length of the wire will be fixed on the wooden board and on the wooden board you are observing l shape here this is one l shape another one l shape two l shaped metal strips are there then one straight strip you are observing here this straight strip and two l shaped strip arrangement if you see because of this straight strip you are observing two gaps here this is one gap and this is another gap when we stand in front of this instrument this is left side to us so this is called left gap gap so it is left gap similarly this side it is right side to us so it is called right gap always unknown we will connect it in the left gap and in the right gap we used to connect known resistance in this diagram from that end they have given that's why this side known resistance and this side unknown resistance they have given okay so now construction of this meter bridge whatever now i explained it is given here 
step by step it consists of uniform resistance wire ac of length 1 meter this is 1 meter length of the wire it is stretched on wooden base board and clamped between two thick right angled metal strip right angled means for this i told l shape so that only they have given it in the form of right angled metal strip another straight strip is fixed between these so that two gaps formed as shown in the figure this one this is one gap this is another gap then known resistance is connected that is that is called standard resistance and unknown resistance is connected in the left gap then one terminal from the center that is straight strip this one here galvanometer is connected what is galvanometer it is used to detect the presence of current and other end of the galvanometer is connected to here you are observing arrow mark it is not a fixed point it is connected to sliding contact sliding contact means what it is like a pen structure and you have to hold it in your hand and you have to move it on this wire this is ac when you move this on the wire at certain point this galvanometer gives zero deflection zero deflection means what pointer will be there in the galvanometer it will come to zero so that point it is marked as a d here okay so now working with this meter bridge means how to get how to determine the unknown resistance so let d be the balance point balance point means what just now i told balance point is nothing but this one this is point on that wire okay where this galvanometer shows zero deflection zero deflection means what no current okay so what is condition of wheatstone's network current through galvanometer must be zero so now this point d for example it is now the point where this galvanometer is showing zero deflection means ig is equal to zero so this d is called balancing point now the circuit is equivalent to wheatstone's network means here one resistance here one resistance two resistance over here current through galvanometer is zero then this the point that is d is balancing point so a to d okay then d to c so 1 2 3 4 okay so if you see the diagram here a to d it is marked as l that is length l then since ac length is 100 cm remaining length dc is taken as 100 minus l okay so this is one resistance that is r this is another resistance x and instead of resistance you have taken it in the form of length l and here it is 100 minus l we know one most important point resistance is always directly proportional to length of the wire so this point if we consider we can write r1 balancing condition of wheatstone's network is r1 by r3 is equal to r3 by r4 okay here it is not typed properly means it is not displaying properly you consider it as r1 by r3 is equal to r3 by r4 wait i will write it r1 by r3 is equal to r2 
divided by R4. Okay. So now compare it. When you compare and you are using one most important point as I told now, R is directly proportional to length of the wire AD. Similarly, X is proportional to length of the wire DC. So if we apply it, you will get this one. R1 by R2 is equal to L divided by 100 minus L. So when we take this, what we will get? Let us see. We will get R3 by R4 is equal to L divided by 100 minus L. Means after getting the equations, comparing the equations, we want the unknown resistance that is R. So R will be X L divided by 100 minus L. So final answer is R is equal to X L divided by 100 minus L. R is unknown resistance, X is known resistance, L is balancing length, remaining length is 100 minus L. So based on this we can get the value of unknown resistance using meter bridge. So let us see one more instrument that is called potentiometer. So potentiometer is a device used to measure EMF or potential difference more accurately. Then principle of this potentiometer is V is directly proportional to L where V is potential difference across the potentiometer wire and L is length of the potentiometer wire. Uses of potentiometer or applications of potentiometer if we see, it is used to find the internal resistance of a cell and second use is it is used to compare the EMFs of two cells. Let us continue. Thank you.